now to our guest of the week. Our guest of the week is Sir Aladikomo Adimola. Here he provides more insight into the BVN, its benefits and opportunities. Based on feedbacks from banks, how would you describe the level of people's compliance to the bank verification number registration? I must say it's been very good. By the time the uh, expiration of the first run uh, happened, uh, we already had close to 25 million people that registered out of the approximate 35 million to 40 million. Considering the fact that a lot of people do not live in the country, considering the fact that the announcement might not have gotten to the villages, considering the fact that some people are sick or are unopportune to go to their various banks, uh, I believe it's been a very good turnout. With the extension to September, I believe you're going to capture at least 95 to 96% of the people that are supposed to register. Everyone is expected to have been captured into the system by October 31st this year. Do you envisage any form of change in that date? I do not think we need any change anymore. Um, and there needs to be a clarity to the policy. Even for the June date, there wasn't any need. I would have said we could have left it. What the policy actually says is that if by that particular date you haven't registered, there are certain banking transactions that you will not be able to carry out. So what it then means is that if you are not able to carry them out, you can then go to your bank, register, and then they will allow you to carry out those transactions. What are the cost implications of this bank verification number registration? To the end user, to the bank customer, there is no cost. The banking system, the central bank and the banks are the ones funding it. Right, so they do not need to, they do not need to, the customers do not need to pay anything. The bank customers are free, it's free of charge, nobody should pay. The banks have already taken care of that cost. Now, what is the cost to the bank banking system? The banks already have their branches. They already have staff on their payroll that actually open accounts at due registration. So it's a minimal cost to the banking system. Are they paying for the infrastructure? Yes, they are paying for the infrastructure, which is to their own benefit, to the bank's benefit. So at the end of the day, the banks also are not paying much relatively for it. Similarly, central bank that is contributing is in the best interest of central bank to actually contribute a little bit. One, to reduce the fraud in the system. Secondly, to know the actual number of people that are bank customers so that central bank can know the kind of policies that they can come up with. What other innovation are we to expect from the banking sector as it regards to payment system in Nigeria? Yes, we're just starting. Uh, the cashless policy from CBN has been a very good one, uh, supported by NIBS and implemented by Nigerian Bank Settlement System. They've done excellently well. Uh, but we're just starting in terms of e-banking. I see a situation whereby the mobile we take over banking completely. I see a situation whereby the traditional brick and mortar bank branches dwindle. Right now we have between five and six thousand bank branches. I see a situation in another ten years that we will not have more than one thousand to two thousand bank branches. Because you will not have any reason to want to go to your bank branch. You can do practically everything you want to do on your mobile phone. You can do it on the web. Right? I see a situation in another five to ten years where cash will disappear completely from the system. Finally, do you think there seems to be some form of rivalry between the banks on one side and the mobile money operators on the other side in terms of who should really drive financial inclusion? Yes, just like any new system that is coming up, there will be a little bit of confusion. There will be the defenders of tops of territories. Everybody wants to jealously guard their own territory. I believe that is what is happening. But it's not just between the banks and the mobile banking operators, but you also have this difference between the banks uh, and the telcos. The telcos and the mobile banking operators. It's going to be like that. But I think all of them should come together to play cooperatively 
in this market. It's a huge market. It's a market that can benefit the telcos, benefit the banks, and benefit the mobile operators and mobile banking operators. It's and it's going to come up.